What's going on there, folks? Good evening. The Earthmaster here on this uh, Saturday night, about 10.30 p.m. on uh, February 12, 2022. A whole lot of twos there in that uh, date range. Kind of late out here in California, but uh, better late than never. Out here with my co-host, Missy Mimis. How's it going, guys? And uh, just coming back from uh, doing a little skating out here. Uh, some rollerblading at uh, our local skating rink. So kind of cool, kind of fun. And no major injuries to report <laughs> tonight. Uh, earthquake earthquake activity. What do we got here on the latest earthquake map here? We got a 3.5 out in the Texas area. Seeing a little swarm of activity kick up here around the Pecos, Texas area uh, today. Let's go ahead and look this up here on the latest map here from the USGS. Showing that earthquake activity throughout the North American plate here. Right around the Pecos, Texas area, just to the northwest here, around the uh, Delaware Mountains, Guadalupe Peak up here. This area does see quite a bit of earthquake movement um, in the, uh, well, in the past few months specifically. We've seen just this area uh, have a, a pretty good massive amount of swarming and uh, not 100% certain exactly what it's leading to. Uh, I know there are some fault systems out here, but there's also some... Uh, oil wells and um, gas wells out here um, in this part of Texas so it could be related to that looking at the uh, depths of those earthquakes either way um, 3.5 3.6 and a couple twos in there uh, over the last 24 hours uh, west coast activity as well picking up out here along the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone it looks like and also the Gorda, uh, Gorda escarpment and the Blanco fracture zone all this is due to the tremor activity that's kind of picking up here in the Southern Oregon and Northern California area. I'll show you that. Uh, might as well just show you guys right now. I'll go ahead and pop this up on the tremor map. Uh, we did see a little increase in activity here, specifically Southern Oregon and uh, Northern California area. Uh, this movement right here, down dip downstream here, would ultimately apply pressure here along the western part of the uh, Cascadia subduction zone in the areas to the west here. So I believe firmly uh, that's due to the uh, tremor activity we're seeing today. Uh, let's see here. So what? how many did we have? 32. 32 epicenters. Uh, there's the uh, movement here. Had a 3.2 well off the coast of Bandon, Oregon, along the Blanco Fracture Zone. And some further activity here on the Gorda Plate, south of the uh, Gorda Ridges, a 3.0. Some other activity here into the subduction zone. Uh, but I guarantee you there's a lot more activity than what's shown here on the map, folks. I've been watching the uh, seismographs earlier and USGS not reporting the activity for whatever reason. Um, it's just, it, I don't know, it just, it's frustrating every night to, uh, you know, see earthquake activity throughout the day on these local seismograph stations here. Yeah, it's and, picking up pretty good. And only see a, a handful of, um, you know, quakes here listed on the map. So it is what it is. Um, nothing major at the moment here on this map, according to the USGS, but they're definitely seeing a, uh, an uptick in earthquake activity here along the southern end of the Cascadia. Uh, getting in on the Antelope Valley area, seeing some swarming as well. Looks like uh, quite a few ones in a lower grade two in that area. Uh, Nevada kind of calming down temporarily, and also that little swarm we've seen in the Las Vegas area has died off uh, for now. Ridgecrest area, just a few small microquakes throughout this region of the uh, state of California. And down south here, things just kind of mellow for the moment. Not a whole lot of movement along the San Jacinto Fault area. No major swarming to report anywhere in Southern California at the moment. Uh, over here along the Calaveras Fault Zone and the, um, what's this other one down here? I'm not for sure exactly. I know there's another fault system that kind of runs south here. It may be the Greenville Fault that extends here. Uh, but either way, a little bit of activity along these small fault systems uh, to the east of the San Andreas Fault Zone. And a couple here north, uh, northeast of the Soledad area on the San Andreas Fault, uh, but mostly microquakes. Uh, into the Pacific Northwest, continued activity at Mount St. Helens here with a couple earthquakes right around the summit area. A couple small ones, but this is all part of a uh, an ongoing swarm of activity here at Mount St. Helens. We checked out the GPS uh, stations there last night and uh, it does kind of show a little bit of decline. Got a little spider on my arm. 
felt something crawling. Uh, at least it wasn't on Missy Mimi's. I think if that was crawling on Missy Mimi's, we'd be hearing screaming. Uh, pretty good <laughs> scream, right? <laughs> <laughs> Little spider. All right. Um, yeah, so what do we got? About uh, 95 earthquakes or so at Mount St. Helens in a, in a definitely swarm fashion here. And extending here to the west, we did check out some GPS stations here. Uh, some of it's older data, but the data that I did see that's recent, uh, kind of it's hard to tell at the moment. We need to wait uh, probably a, a couple more weeks to get the uh, accurate GPS measurements here, uh, seeing if we're seeing in, any uh, inflation or deflation here at Mount St. Helens. Something to watch, though, because it's been kind of a hot spot for earthquake activity recently. Mount Rainier. Uh, one little earthquake there, almost on the one magnitude, uh, pretty shallow earthquake, 1.7 kilometers there, just off the summit of Mount Rainier. Um, all other volcanoes up here in the Cascades look pretty quiet. No further movement here off the coast of Washington or around the Seattle Fault uh, up here off the coast of Canada. Not a whole lot being reported on the USGS stations here. And of course, Alaska, uh, very typical for the uh, plate boundary subduction zone of the Pacific and North American plate with quite a bit of movement up around the Cook Inlet area, you can see the swarm of movement and also around the Denali area. I'm gonna have to check that, uh, see what we got up there for uh, uh, for movement. Uh, 4.3 in the Arat Islands area. It looks like a pretty deep earthquake here into the Aleutian Trench. Very quiet once mm -hmm. again through this region here of the uh, Pacific Ring of Fire and some activity on the uh, Philippine Plate, it looks like, 5.5, and also over here around the Mariana Trench, a uh, 4.6 4 .6 at 116 kilometers. Mm -hmm. uh, look at this, act. I mean, we're, we are seeing a little bit of activity through the Indonesia area and Solomon Islands, but nothing like Mantonga. the swarm of activity wow. we're seeing here. Islands are moving real good. Kind of mentioned this last night with the deeper activity we started seeing here in Fiji to watch this area down here. Kind of look at, looks like it may be working its way further south here along the Kermadec Trench towards New Zealand and the Hikarangi subduction zone. A lot of this activity here relatively deep as well. A majority of it is deep, except for this little 4.9 here. Uh, 10 kilometers right uh, where are we at here. Just to the south again of the Hunga Tonga volcano. This area has seen that swarm of uh, earthquake activity. We'll do seven days. Actually, we've got to go back 30 days to see the uh, volcanic activity, right? All this area has seen quite a bit of uh, swarming wow. just in this general area right around the Hunga Tonga volcano. So something uh, something brewing there in that area. All shallow earthquake activity around the uh, volcano chains there. Uh, what else we got here in the big island of Hawaii, southeast flank, looking pretty active once again. And just a couple new added quakes around Kilauea and up here around Mauna Loa. But things kind of just, uh, just kind of at the standstill uh, time frame at the moment. Not a whole lot really popping off there in the, uh, on the big island in terms of new activity. Uh, South America pretty quiet. Did have one little earthquake out here around the Guatemala Basin, 4.8 near the uh, what's that Galapagos Islands? Uh, Galapagos. What? Galapagos Islands. Galapag. What did I say? Uh, Galapagos. Galapagos. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> yeah, I'm from California. Okay, Galapagos. <gasps> so that's actually called what? The Galapagos Islands. Galapagos Islands. I okay, so. we'll see. Hmm. Galapagos. Galapagos, I believe. Galapagos? Yeah. All right. We'll be corrected no matter what. Exactly. So it doesn't matter which one of us say it right or wrong. Guatemala <laughs> as well, a 4.7 into the Middle America Trench here at 72 kilometers. Puerto Rico uh, area looking uh, not too active recently. Just a little bit of movement there on the southwest area. Um, what else we got? Oklahoma. Did see that earthquake over here in Maine. That's a little earlier earthquake. Uh, Yellowstone. Did have that significant swarming, uh, and as you notice here, let's go back here to the USGS page, right? The update uh, this morning on the Yellowstone activity. Look at that. Not a speck of earthquake activity <laughs> being reported by the USGS. And I guarantee you, there's a lot. There's a lot of earthquake activity that struck up here in the center part of the park, right around Old Faithful, to be exact, for the epicenter. Look at that. That's pretty uh, significant amount of uh, definitely not zero earthquake activity. No, there's a lot. There's <laughs> definitely know. a lot of activity. 
Uh, let me refresh this. This one looks kind of old. There we go. Um, and this this activity showing up on all of these stations throughout the park here. So no doubt a lot of earthquake activity. It may not be super big. Some of this may not even be above three magnitude, but uh, the earthquake activity is there and that's it's a, not being reported. That's a nice uh, seismos, per well tuned. You can see them defined pretty well on there. Well, here's the difference between uh, this, act say for example, the little west thumb, we can see that activity, right? Mm -hmm. But not as distinct as the old faithful one. See all these little yeah. spikes here? There's a lot of earthquake and activity not showing up on the other seismographs that because it's localized. Well, it's localized to the station, to but station. smaller yeah. uh, in terms. That's why it's not showing up um, as much on this yeah. this graph here. Some of them are, but uh, nothing like the like that one. Jeez. The old uh, <laughs> old faithful there, looking pretty uh, crazy. Uh, within the last couple hours, we did see some further movement here. Seen a couple earthquakes kick up once again. Swarms could come and go as they please, folks in Yellowstone. So. Uh, you know, definitely something to watch for sure. Um, but yeah, kind of cool. I like uh, seeing Yellowstone swarm up a little bit. Pretty neat to watch. It's something I've been uh, watching for quite some time. It is a super volcano, so kind of crazy to watch the activity. All right, folks, uh, what else we got here for solar weather? Uh, I'm not going to make this a super long video because we're pretty tired out here. Um, rollerblading and whatnot does take its, uh, take its toll on you. <laughs> almost like a full body workout yeah uh let's see what else we got here solar weather diminishing activity notice this was all red yeah. earlier this morning has since been dropped down to uh pretty much nothing in the three-day geomagnetic forecast here so things change rapidly in the solar weather department uh flare activity diminishing as well uh, i did have an m flare and uh, a couple upper c flares over the last uh um 24 hours or so uh, activity, sunspot activity is diminishing at least as far as 2941 goes. These departing sunspots here are going to say goodbye. And we got 2946 here coming within view. And, and looking at it, it's going to be directly in view with us uh, once it uh, once we uh, get that uh, facing the Earth's side. This thing could start growing. It actually, actually kind of looks like it is growing right now. Yeah. So we'll see, uh, see how that one does in the <laughs> coming days. All right, guys, have a good night. Enjoy your uh, rest of the weekend out there. And uh, remember, just keep an eye on these seismographs. There's definitely a lot of earthquake activity coming in. Not right now onto the uh, Northern California station, but uh, Mendocino down here is a station that we tend to watch for earthquake activity along the um, <coughs> Cascadia subduction zone. Where's my hand at? I know, I see that. I know, it's, I can't see missing. it on here. There we go. <laughs> I was wondering. I seen something pop up here, but yeah. This area right here, the yeah, Mendocino, California station, uh, localized uh, seismograph here in Northern Cal, around the uh, Eureka area. All right, guys, have a good night. Stay safe out there. Have a good night, guys. Peace out. Peace out.